Dr. Hagelin, we now have our superintendent's report. So always be selling, right? <laughs> always be selling. Good job, Heather. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're training them from a young age. It's wonderful. <laughs> that was a great report and very descriptive of, of the, all the different experiences that the students at PVA get to engage in. Uh, it's a pretty special place, so if you haven't had a chance to stop by, I would certainly encourage you to do that. All right, so I want to begin by thanking Vintage Hills Elementary School for providing, um, really putting their hearts into the artwork that surround the classroom. I think you can see it, or this, the boardroom. Thank you, guys. This is the last week to participate in our school quality survey. If you haven't had the opportunity, please take 10 minutes to provide your input on your experiences within the district. If you have a student in grades uh, 6 through 12, please encourage them to take the survey as well. This is important feedback for us, so we appreciate your engagement. I was able to be in Washington, D.C. this past week to be present for the National We the People finals with the Amador Valley and Foothill High School competitive civics teams. After two days of hearings in front of legal scholars, practicing attorneys, and members of various state and federal judici judicial benches, both of our teams landed in the top 10 um, to earn their place in the finals on the final day. Congratulations to Foothill High School for taking third place in this rigorous competition. That's third place in the nation. Well done. I'm sure you all, you all know, but we always like to look at Annabelle whenever we talk about the Foothill the People team because she was on Unit 6, yeah, and they did an incredible job. And also to the Amador Valley team who can't, captured ninth place nationally. I was fortunate to sit through the majority of the hearings over, the, over those three days for both teams. I was incredibly impressed with how well the students were prepared, but most especially amazed at how insightful their responses to difficult questions from the judges were. And when I say difficult questions, I mean some of them were just difficult. And I was glad that I was sitting in the audience and they were sitting up at the panel tables. These brilliant students are guided by phenomenal teachers. I want, to thank you, I want to thank Mr. Graham McBride and Jeremy Dedimore from Foothill and Mrs. Stacy Scalar from Amador Valley for the work that they do every year to get students ready to compete. Last year I was able to join, or excuse me, last night I was able to join parents and teachers and students at Harvest Park's open house. More open house events are scheduled in the next few weeks. I hope to see you out and about as we celebrate the work that's being done by our creative students and dedicated teachers in our classrooms. This is crazy to say out loud, but in five short weeks, we will be celebrating graduation and promotions across the district. It's almost time to start tying ribbons down Main Street to honor our graduating class of 2023, a tradition that I look forward to participating in with the families of our seniors and the members of our board and executive cabinet. But before we start tying ribbons down Main Street, it's time to grab your shoes, put on a hat, and a friend, to grab a friend, and run for education. As Cheryl mentioned on Sunday, our friends at PPIE will hold the annual Run for Education. This is a fantastic community building event, which helps to fund engaging learning opportunities for our students and projects for our teachers. We will all be there, and I hope that you will all be there too. So hopefully see you on Sunday. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> 